And the Methodists don't even know what it's about. But the thing is, all the rituals are nailed to the cross. He's washed us from our sins. Now there's only one baptism. And he said that to an Ephesian church. And before Jesus was nailed to the cross, if, a, if the people at Ephesus wanted to become a citizen of Israel, they had to go through a proselyte process. Proselyte process. That was a three-step process. They had to be circumcised, washed in water, which was they called a baptism, but it was a new birth. And they call that a new birth because if you were coming from some nation around the world to come to Israel, since only Israel was serving Jehovah God, you had to give up everything, your money, your position, everything, come here and be circumcised, washed in water, and offer two turtle doves and every new baby in Israel. And you could be 70 years old when you're coming to do this. And every new baby in Israel had to offer two turtle doves when they were born. Of course, they didn't. Their mothers did. That's the proselyte process. And the reason Jesus was washed in water is the Pharisees kept calling Jesus a Samaritan. He said, we'll shut their mouths, John. Let's fulfill all righteousness, including their righteousness. They say in their halakha, their verbal law, that if a man will be washed in water and be circumcised and offer two turtle doves. Now, I've already, my mother has already, it is the Jewish law that, that two turtle doves were offered for me and that I was circumcised the eighth day, and that's already done. You wash me in water, John, and by their halakha, they, says, they say they have to listen to me. Let's do it. And they did. And John said, here's why people say, why Jesus washed in water? Amazes me, it's in John, the first chapter. He tells you exactly why Jesus is washed in water. If you knew the Pharisees kept calling him a Samaritan, you're from northern Israel. Jesus wasn't going to try to convince them he was born in Bethlehem of, of Judea, was he? He ain't going to argue with them. He just says, watch this. Because the washing was adopted from the washing of the priesthood every morning at the brazen sea. And here's why Jesus was washed in water, and he tells you. It's just amazing to me. They would have to listen to him according to their Verbal law, their paradosis, their halakha, I don't have time to go into that. And John says right here, in John 1, verse 31, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. That's the only reason I come. So the Pharisees will have to listen. We're not supposed to be doing that. All the rituals are nailed to the cross with Christ. Now, and I do a whole series on that, and you all know that. Now, we got to Kafar. Where was I? How would I get there? Boy, I sure took off in a lot of directions, didn't I? <laughs> all right, let me just show you this. Concerning the spirits in prison, let's go back to First Peter. Let's go back to First Peter concerning the spirits in prison. You got a problem if you believe baptism with the spirits in prison. If you believe baptism and all of the Gentiles had to go through this process to come into Israel. Isn't it amazing in Colossians? It's amazing to me that Paul aligns this exactly in Colossians 2.11. In whom also you are circumcised, Colossian Gentile church. You're circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. You're circumcised with a spiritual circumcision. Why is he telling the Colossian Gentile church that? Because if they had come into Israel before Jesus was nailed to the cross, they would have had gone through the literal. He says, now that you are spiritual, your spiritual Israel, spiritual Jews, to become a member of spiritual Israel of the church, you've got to be circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead, buried with him in baptism. 
Why would they follow baptism with circumcision? Read any Jewish writer, they'll tell you circumcision was the first part of the proselyte process. After the circumcision wound was healed, they'd wash them in water and then offer two turtle doves and a new baby was born in Israel. That's what they said. I don't know why nobody knows what this means. All you got to do is read a whole bunch of Jewish books. Culture, customs, idioms, metaphors. How about the Templeness Ministry and Services by Alfred Edersheim? Or Henry Saltaw's The Tabernacle? That's all you have to do is read that. It's amazing to me. I read this stuff. Oh, gosh, we got to quit washing people in water and stop this passing around crackers and grape juice. They were eating a spirit. They were eating the Passover and now it's spiritual. I don't know. Most of these preachers, I think, flunk general math and, and uh, they can't add two and two. Buried with him in baptism, wherein you risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. If we're buried with him in baptism, and may I add this again? We say, buried with him in baptism. Downward, right? Like that. That's supposed to depict a burial, isn't it? Down six feet under, right? That depicts a burial in America, but it don't depict a burial in Israel 2,000 years ago. They buried their people. Any self-respecting Jew would not found himself planted in the ground. They buried them in tombs. And like I've said before, if you're going to bury somebody literally in water, you need to bury them sideways. You get your great big fan, a great big wall of water and say, buried with him in baptism. That is alien thought to the Jew. Buried with him in baptism, six feet under. Are you out of your minds? We don't do that. And any Jew watching some Baptist preacher do that, or some Church of Christ preacher, saying, you guys are out of your minds. We didn't do that. We didn't put him six foot in the ground. Isn't that something? Where do you get that kind of stuff? You can get that directly out of McClinic and Strong. Under tomb, T-O-M-B. That's all you got to do. It doesn't take a genius to find this stuff out. It just takes lots of reading. Now, and then he says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Blotting out the handwriting... There's two handwritings, one on fleshy tables of the heart and one on tables of stone. Now, one of them's going to be blotted out. I wonder which one. Well, certainly the ones on tables of stone. That's the Old Testament law. The law wasn't blotted out, just the rituals. The law, do we make void the law by faith? Yea, we establish the law. That's what Paul said in that last verse of the third chapter of Romans. All the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Agape, not phileo, your neighbor. Not like them. That's not what it says. So, and then he says, Let no man therefore judge you, verse 16, in Jewish meats, Jewish drinks, respect of any Jewish holy days, or of new moons, which came the first of every month for seven straight months on their ecclesiastical calendar, and they sounded a trumpet, seven trumpets, or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body or the church is Christ. He's saying, that's the real thing, that's the real Israel. Now, but look, go back over here to First Timothy, First Peter. Look here in First Peter. Now, concerning the spirits in prison. Now, let me write it up on the board again. The gospel is the means by which. That's what it says, actually. Put to death in the flesh, quickened by the spirit. The gospel is the means by which he went and preached to the spirits in prison. That's the means by which he did it. Which sometime were disobedient. The spirits in prison at one time were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, who was God long suffering toward? Huh? His long suffering toward Noah, and what was he putting up with when he was macrothomia? put up suffering a long time or allowing something to happen for a long time. What was he allowing to happen for a long time? Sin. All those Gentiles in the world that paid no attention to Noah 
while he preached for 120 years. He was long-suffering toward the Gentiles. Gentiles are all the...